Southampton Football Club have a rich history in bringing talented players through their ranks, like the likes of Gareth Bale, Theo Walcott and Luke Shaw. But you may not know that they actually have a link to Guernsey FC and it's largely down to one man from the island. From St Mary's to the studio, Matt Letissier joined me to help tell the story of this fascinating football club. It was a pretty rough winter and they had a lot of games postponed um, and it got to kind of April uh, and they had to play, I think it was something like 19 games in 31 days. Uh, it was just crazy fix for this <laughs> and obviously the players started to drop down like flies, they were getting injured and uh, so they were, they were struggling for an away game and for, for numbers to fill the bench. Uh, I think I was 44 at the time and my brother says to me, he said, oh, he said would you sign on? He said, we, we might be struggling here. So I said, yeah, no problem. So I, I rocked up for, for one game and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Were you frustrated that you did at school maybe? Uh, I was frustrated that I didn't get on a bit earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the manager going, come on, I've got any chance. We're 3-1 down here, you give me a chance. So he, he only gave me about 10 minutes. So uh, yeah, I couldn't turn it around. While Letitia can laugh it off now, I got on the plane to the Channel Island to speak to another Guernsey man who didn't quite have it as smooth on the south coast of England. When I got released from Southampton and went to Bournemouth, the love for the game almost almost disappeared for me. So coming back here and playing with my friends and, and enjoying my football again, obviously scoring goals and playing well helped. Um, and yeah, and then I think when I hit 16 and was playing for Guernsey, that was almost when I wanted to take it a lot more serious and try and get back into academy football. Scott won the under-19 Euros with England in 2022 and played against Manchester City alongside his role model Jack Grealish while at the Robins. And the teenager still values every lesson learnt at his home club. I think that was my probably my most enjoyable time playing football. Yeah, I think it was massive and I think the, the players at GFC definitely helped with that. I think travelling away... At, at the time, it was every week because they were they were sorting out Foots Lane and developing that. So I think travelling with the players every Saturday and just being in that that men's football environment definitely put me in good stead for when I when I went over to Bristol. And I think it, it helped me mature a lot. And Guernsey manager Tony Vance was raving about how far the youngster can go. With Alex, um, we weren't allowed to use him until he was 16 uh, for, for the because of the rules. Um, so he was just sort of on the on the on the peripheral, waiting to sort of be allowed to train with us. Uh, when he trained, I remember the lads, they were like, who, who is this? You know, didn't know his name, some of them. Um, they, you know, they'd heard of him, but they didn't really know, you know, too much about him apart from the fact that they couldn't get near him and they couldn't get the ball off him. I remember Kieran Mann, um, who is a very competitive player. Um, he, was, he was basically having the mickey taken out of him by Alex with his skills and, and sharp feet and, and Kieran was just laughing because I think deep down he wanted to boot him but he couldn't, he couldn't actually catch him. Um, and uh, you know, over training, sort of, it, was just, it was obvious that he had to be included in the squad. Um, and then when he's in the squad, it was obvious he had to be in the team. The players were telling us that themselves. Uh, and then it was, it was clear, clear that he was too good for us. So um, on he went and the rest is going to be history and the rest is going to be, he's going to write, write it himself, you know, as long as he, he stays in, in the right situation. And Guernsey's first ever English international echoes those thoughts and believes Scott could overtake his tally of eight caps for his nation. It wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if he went on to, to play for his country, if he went on to surpass uh, the amount of caps that I got for England, uh, I'd be absolutely delighted for him. And I think it's, it's brilliant for the, for, the, for the island's footballers that they're able to play at that level and you know, put themselves in a shop window to get spotted by, by clubs higher up the, the chain. However, Guernsey's pay-to-play scenario in the English leagues are slowly bringing the club to the ground. And I was invited to the home of director Nick Legg to discuss the club's financial restrictions. It was terms of entry to the league and uh, one of those was we had to pay for the opposition. We're asking to come into their league, if you like, and, and um, teams have to vote us in. Um, and they're not going to vote us in if it's going to cost them money, ultimately. So when we're uh, bringing a team in, we bring nearly 30 people in from the visiting team. Um, so that's players, coaches um, and club officials. A fixture costs us £10,000 if you like. Um, so if you're getting people paying £10 to come in, it's a simple mass. You need to get a lot of people through the gate to make that game break even. I think if, if we hadn't have been so successful in the start, we wouldn't have been here now. You know, this season's been a real struggle. Just as an example, our flight costs this season have probably gone up £40,000 from what we budgeted, so that's going to put us in a difficult situation and 
things aren't going to get any cheaper. We become more heavily reliant on, on sponsors. When we were being really successful and, um, you know, we didn't dip below a thousand people, we were nearer 2,000 people, 1,700 people, that gate was effectively paying for our away games as well. Now the, the home gate isn't paying for the home games um, and isn't paying for the away games. That means we've got to get it in from other ways, so sponsorship. Um, you know, we're having to raise probably around £300,000 of that every season just to be sustainable and, and to continue. And the reality is if we don't raise it, we don't get on the plane next weekend, we don't play the game and uh, it would be good night. It is a good night for now though, and I travelled to the club's new state-of-the-art £3 million training complex to test myself against some of the new rising talents. So we're here at Guernsey's new training facilities. Let's take a look at where the magic is cooked up. Okay, wow. That would explain why there's so much talent brought up on this island. I might be in a little bit of trouble here. The Guernsey players are about to arrive for training and I need to do some scouting reports because I will be in trouble for these challenges if not. Be right back. I wasn't going easy as fast up, I took on leaderboard record holder, Brandon Wallace. We'll have to see what you've got. Hopefully, hopefully you won't do too bad. I reckon about an average score of about 40 to 50, I reckon you got. But first, I got the winger to show me how it's done. Wow. He's a young star coming up. Let's just hope I can get somewhat close. I mean, watching that, I'll be honest, all confidence has gone out the window. 67 to beat. After watching that, I do not feel confident because he was a joke. Ah, I got it, mate. Ah, 42, don't mind it. That is, that is really tough. He makes it look very easy. But oh, I think it's 1-0 to GFC at the moment, to be honest. It's going to be a tough ask. Challenge two saw me take on centre-half Tom Vodin in the sideways and then forwards pass drill. And despite the defenders backing... I think you're going to do pretty well, to be fair. I mean... You're a great commentator, so I reckon that's going to uh, come across into the football side of things. I still fell short. To be fair to Saj, 30 for his first time, 32 for my first time. I'm going to say they're pretty good scores. God, I'm so tired. <laughs> and that tiredness showed in the final challenge. I missed this penalty oh, oh so narrowly to complete oh. the greenwash. So close. That was so close. <laughs> Final word with Tony Vance, the manager. Let's see, even though I've lost all three challenges, whether he'd sign me on. So, Tony, I know it probably wasn't my best showing today, but seeing as it was my first time, how do you think I did? Um, out of 10? Yeah, go on. Give me, give me it out of 10. <laughs> mm, I'm going to give you six. Six? Okay. Yeah. Wow, well, that's fairly generous to be fair. Yeah, maybe right. it's, football isn't for me after all, and maybe one day my dream of playing for GFC will come true. Well, you got the shirt. I do, yeah, they can't take that away from me now, yeah. surely. So yeah. that's 30, it. 39 99 from the club <laughs> shop. 
yeah, maybe I'll stick to being the club commentator. But with the team showing no signs of throwing in the towel just yet, who knows, there might be another Matlet this year around the corner. But they'd have to start here at Guernsey FC and create more moments of magic like this. And now Wilf is actually driving forward. He's been absolutely brilliant so far. He goes for a halfway line. Joe's a very, very good strike. He's gone it all the way in. What a strike from Wilf is A halfway line goal. It is absolutely brilliant. He's done it again. We saw it a few seasons back. And he's just pulled out an absolute worldie.